it'll kind of change what you're doing. Really help. It's free too, uh, and you 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 only get a few. Um, like I think you get ten or twelve a day. Um, uh -huh. But this tool will go out and find the uh, machine ID and the uh, I just put it in Facebook and the uh, uh, Wikipedia. Yeah. So the machine, I, when I was doing it, because I tell people all the time, a lot of times people think I know everything. I was like, I don't know shit. I don't know as much as, you know, I'm always learning. I have people say, teach me everything, you know, and I'm like, listen, I've been doing this for like 20 years. So I can't just dump 20 years of everything I've self-taught myself into your brain. Yeah. And um, one sure. of the things, you know, one of the things you mentioned in the show today, um, I was watching with Madge, you said that it's really hard to sell SEO. And I remember back in the day, whenever I used to try to sell SEO back in Jacksonville, when I lived in Jacksonville, was it was like pulling teeth to try to get someone to spend any money on SEO. And now what we do is what you actually mentioned today is like I just do web and SEO and most of the people, you know, go straight from web to SEO. It's like a natural, just easy sell, no problem whatsoever. And they just go straight into it. So. Yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, you know, we started out as a web design house and I always will be a web design house. I think that's the one thing, the one caveat in our business that will probably not go away anytime soon. Um, yeah. Obviously, SEO is getting harder and harder, more competitive, more frustrating. <laughs> I've got a site that I just took on last week and I had to charge the guy five grand just to clean it up. I mean, it's a mess. It's you know, and he didn't know any better. He hired a group overseas, paid 500 bucks a month and, you know, which shouldn't have been touched for under 1500 bucks a month because the guy has 11 services, 10 locations. I mean, it's just, it's a massive project and he's just got a mess on his hand right now. And if Google still did penalties, which I haven't seen a penalty from Google except for review schema, this guy would be under penalty. I mean, it's just a freaking mess. I mean, it's, yeah, um, his, anchor text ratio is all out of whack and he's a local business. So, you know, his exact match anchor text is 85% of his link structure. So it's like, dude, yeah. you know, and he went from zero links to 10,000 links in 60 days. Wow. And you know, people tell me, Oh, link velocity <laughs> matter. Well, bullshit link velocity matters when you don't have zero on a two year old site. And all of a sudden now you have 10,000 in 60 days. It matters. Yeah. You know, just don't be stupid. So, yeah. But. It's like when um, I've had people because we'll do some click through rate manipulation and stuff like that. And I yeah. tell them to say, you know, it works, but you can't go just like with backlinks. You can't go in there and say, I normally get 2000, you know, web visits a month or 5000. Let me go in there, and dump 3000 visitors. Yeah, exactly. This looks absolutely abnormal and Google's going to see it. They're not dumb. And then it's going to mess up your map and you're not going to be found anywhere or at best you'll be found way out here instead of way down here. Exactly. I mean, so you can't do stupid stuff. Well, especially know. in a small town of a hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, dude, there's not 3000 people a month in your small town that need your service. Trust me. No. So, no. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself, how you get started with SEO web design. I'm just curious, the schema, you know, is everybody, you know, I've had a couple of people say, you know, how much does he charge for this schema? Cause I heard he's a schema master, you know, and I just told him, I said, I don't know. It probably varies from client to client. You can't just say schemas, a flat rate for everybody. Yeah, you really can't. Um, Cause it, like I said, it really depends on the number of locations. You know, lawyers are going to be much more expensive because of the research time um, compared to roofing companies or local um, local business, something like that. But um, I got started. I, I started in software development in 1990. Um, uh -huh. I really thought it was cool to do stuff with. I built my first website with uh, Dreamweaver 2, I think it was. Wow. Um, and, uh, and I did it for a church. Um, and mm -hmm. so... It was just, you know, at that time, websites weren't really that big a deal, um, you know, for anybody, especially churches. So I did it and um, just played around with it a little bit. And then I kind of got away from it. I actually took a job um, um, as a 
steel contractor. That was my background in the Navy. I was a nuclear welder. So I kind of got out of it for a little while, but then I came back into it after the owner died and shut the business down. I'm like, crap. So um, I got into it again. And then um, again, it's just, I, Elizabeth and I, we had an insurance company. Um, mm -hmm. so selling life insurance and health insurance. And I was playing with website stuff on the side, just kind of just keeping up with Dreamweaver. Um, and then uh, probably three years after that, then Elizabeth and I started flipping houses and I left web design completely out. So uh -huh. we were flipping so many houses. We were flipping, you know, between 150 and 200 houses a year. Wow. Um, good old days. <laughs> yeah, good old days. And then in 2010, when it all crashed, we... Yep. I was sitting there going, well, shit, what do I do now? Um, you know, so I went and we opened this business up. And again, I did a website for my local church and I did five other websites for free just so I'd have a portfolio. Um, but here I am. I'm still in Dreamweaver and open source just came out. So I remember good old Dreamweaver. That was back in the day where you had to code everything. Exactly. So where I was charging, you know, eight, 10, 12 grand for a website that would take me six to eight weeks. These yep. people were puffing them out for 400 bucks over a weekend. And I yep. was like, oh, crap. So I fought the whole open source thing for a long time. Um, and then finally my developer said, dude, you need to go WordPress or you're just going to die. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and he's right just because of the, t the time it takes to code things, you know, and I'm not a big template fan. I'd never did a lot of templates in Dreamweaver. Yep. Um, but, you know, at the same time, mobile was coming out and that was the big thing thing for me with the responsiveness of going with Dreamweaver, you basically had to build two separate websites at the beginning. Yep. There was nothing auto responsive, you know, and that was probably what got me into WordPress is the auto responsive. And I tried Joomla, I tried Drupal. Those were a freaking nightmare. Um, I haven't tried since it's come out because I've had a couple of people ask me, um, Dada or Duda. Uh, I, I used to use Duda for the mobile side, the M dot. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I never used it for an actual web page. Um, mm -hmm. it, was just, it was a nice, easy way to take any website and turn it into mobile. But okay. um, yeah, but the reason why I ask is I had someone they they convert people from WordPress to Duda, and okay. one of the things he mentioned was because I've never done it. I everybody I take on is WordPress. I would have to retrain everybody on Duda, and I told him I said, for example, that's my biggest problem. And it's not scalable for me to have to do that. And um, he said, well, what happened? He converted, it was a legal site, converted it from WordPress to Duda. And then the traffic jumped and the rankings jumped. And I told him, I said, I don't know if that has to do with the platform or not, but I'd be interested in seeing the rest of the ones that you convert over from WordPress. You yeah, know, and I, I've yeah. never, you know, we've converted, um, when we've tested, you know, I converted a shopping site from WordPress to Big Commerce. Because mm -hmm. uh, as far as e commerce platforms, Big Commerce is probably the one that's most advanced besides uh -huh. WooCommerce. Um, but we um, immediately took it back because the, the learning curve was too big. And, yep. you know, I'm like you guys, you know, Elizabeth is straight of Veda. She's been a Veda for four and a half years. So, yep. Um, her dev team can pump out sites super quick because they don't have a learning curve. And, um, and that's a big thing when you're talking an agency. So um, she took on. Yeah, that's what I try to tell them. I said, but for instance, most people I tell them say we're pumping out probably, you know, right now, probably 80 sites a month. Yeah. You know, and I told them, I said, I have to be able to keep up with that. The only way to keep up with that is that everybody's trained on one platform. Yeah. You know, unless I want to develop another team that's specifically for Shopify or specifically for another builder. And I don't want to do that. So. Exactly. I mean, that's what you know, I tell people I've asked, you know, had people interview me and ask me, why are you like that? And I'm like, well, it's it's the whole Southwest Airlines thing. One of the things in America, Southwest Airlines is the most profitable airlines in the country. Mm -hmm. um, actually, probably part of the world. And the main reason is they buy the same type of planes over and over again. Yep. They don't have to cross train all their mechanics and they don't have to store warehouses full of parts of multiple different planes. It's yep. um, and it's all just, you know, when, when I was flipping houses, it was the same thing. We had four packages and each house got a package and that package didn't deviate. I mean, it was yep. that's the only way to continue repetition, repetition. And one of the reasons I'm such a big believer in libraries is because you're you don't have to keep redoing the work again, yep. you know, 
Um, I have li I have keyword libraries, schema libraries, content libraries that are just massive. So when I take on a new client, I most of that stuff is done for as far as research, as far as a niche or whatever. But um, yeah, we create them like swipe files, you know, basically that way we don't have to go looking everywhere. And because um, we deal with rank and rent as well. And I'll tell them, say, you know, if you niche down to just say tree removal, it's very easy because I know exactly what to do, where to go, what type of backlinks you need, niche edits, all this stuff versus, you know, not knowing and not having it available to myself. So. Yeah, and we do we do a lot of rank. I do rank and banks. Um, I don't like. I mean, rank and rent sometimes, but I don't. I don't do lead gen. I don't sell mm -hmm. any leads. I think that's too much of a pain in the butt for an agency. Mm -hmm. um, but and then so we have affiliates. We have lead gens. You know, I'm I'm going after a franchise right now. So I built a site, outranked the local franchise, and he's going to help me get my foot in the door to the um, the franchise. Ease. I always thought franchise yeah. SEO would be so much fun. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of different variables, and we we like to try to make sure that we're you know, our SOPs are always just fine tuned. Um, you know, we try to make sure that you know when we do see something new and we've tested it. You know, yeah. probably one of our biggest advantages is I've probably got 800 websites in our own network. Um, mm -hmm. All auction sites. My son's been buying um, auction domains for me since he was 14 and he just turned 21. Wow. Uh, so that's all he's been doing for seven years. So um, he's very, very good at finding me good, cheap domains that haven't expired. I'm not a big fan of expired domains. Um, yeah. And, you know, and we just use that as far as our niches. And, you know, I don't go out and test a lot of link platforms and um, I don't have a team of guest post people and all the stuff that other people try to do. I just, you know, we just do the same thing, whatever the site needs and not every site, not every site's the same. Mm -hmm. you know, I've, got, I've got a little freaking plumbing site in this little freaking town in Oklahoma that I'm, I'm, it's kicking my ass, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's the, the normal stuff that we've done just isn't moving this thing on the GMB side, on the organic side, it's fine. But maps is a whole different animal. There's yep. um, maps is probably the most frustrating part of our business right now, at least in my yep. sense. Um, mainly just because of the whole worried about suspension thing. Yeah. You know, um, we were using a platform to make changes on the GMB and now that platform has, has lost that connection. So we're like, okay, do we now go back into the GMB himself and start making changes and, and risk yeah. that, you know, risk that at least the API system, you know, alleviated a lot of the suspensions, but I got a main GMB right now. I got to put a phone number on and I'm, you know, I'm going to do I look at 10 guides to see if I can yeah. get it changed that way. But, yeah. you know, I'm freaking out because this is a three-year-old GMB that's, you know, it, it's, it's and the way it is right now. You could change one little thing and then it could get suspended. That's why I don't like doing them too much. And I'll tell a client ahead of time. So if I do this, cause you want me to do it, yeah. I'm going to be held liable. <laughs> Anything happens just FYI. Exactly. Well, he, yeah. he bought a, and it's funny too, because these clients, you know, he bought a vanity phone number, you know, 1-800 call now or some crap like that. So he's like, yeah. I want this on the GMB. And I'm like, no, we've already got a tracking number on there. Just leave it alone. You know, <laughs> it's just the GMB. It's not, you know, put it on your website. I don't care. You know, and, yeah. you know, and so he's just like, well, give it a try. And I told him the same thing. I said, well, I'm not responsible. This thing's bringing in 115 calls a month. Yeah. I think you're freaking crazy. So, you know, yeah. but whatever, you know, so, um, yeah, some of the, he, but he's a great guy. He just gets these little quirks in his head in the middle of the night and says, Hey, let's try this. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> it's not. I, I have, uh, my old, uh, boss when I was still doing some freelancing and stuff, he told me he used to come in, he'd say, William sit down and we'd sit down and he'd say, I have this wild and crazy idea. I was like, Oh God, here we go again. You know, so I know all about that. So how did you get started? I know it's a natural type, you know, evolution, but how did you get started in SEO? Did you yeah. quote unquote, go to, I mean, go to school, go to one of these things, or you just kind of learned it yourself? Well, back when um, I got, um, I was specializing, I was trying to specialize in churches, charities, and foundations. Uh -huh. And so I went out and I've got some foundations and, you know, did some website work with them. And I had one of my foundations that um, a 
uh, Cancer Foundation for Children, Terminal Children. Um, and this lady was just getting ripped off every month. And we were having our, you know, I go to lunch with my clients whenever I can, at least my local ones here. Um, yeah. And she was telling me she's paying like, you know, 1200 bucks a month for this thing called SEO. And I'm like, really? Okay, well, let me look at this. And and so I went and um, I actually learned from the Callan brothers, um, Brad uh -huh. Callan, um, and watched some of their stuff. There wasn't, there wasn't courses or stuff like that out there. And so I bought, I can't remember the first tool I bought. I think it was SEO um, Profiler, which I still okay. use. So I plugged her site into SEO Profiler and all of a sudden all these bad links came up. And then um, wow. she wasn't, um, back then it was um, Google, what was it? Webmaster. So Webmaster <laughs> tools. So she didn't have a Webmaster tool account. So, you know, I got her one and I put it in there and boom, next day she's under manual penalty. And so, um, so that was my first SEO client was trying to figure out how to get somebody out of a manual penalty. So that's how I learned SEO. And yeah. so, and got again, thrown into the lines then basically, yeah, basically just, you know, but I thought it was a good place to learn now that I know what it was because, you know, I was a lot of stuff that was out there about SEO was doing exactly what the people that she hired was doing. You know, you just buy bulk, bulks of links. You don't pay attention to where these links are, where they're from. It's just the number of links, you know, get that page score up. You know, it was all about the Google page score and that was all by links. And so, um, so after about six, seven months and I didn't charge her, um, I just told her to stop paying them. You know, we got her out of penalty. And so now I had to learn, okay, now what do I do when she's out of penalty? And so, you know, again, more study, more, you know, test and trial and error. And again, this is on HTML. We hadn't been into yeah, WordPress. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and then it's, some of this stuff was common sense. I think I bought a, um, I think I bought two books. I can't remember. They're in my, they're in my house. But, um, and the big thing I knew what, which was important was internal link structure. I always knew right. internal link structure is so important just because it's the navigation of the website. You know, I didn't know anything about crawl. I didn't know anything about that, but I figured if somebody goes to the website and wants to know about web design, they typically don't care yet about internet marketing. So mm -hmm. let's, not, let's not make them go through that to get to web design. And so, and it made obviously, you know, the HTML site easier because I wouldn't have to build out these massive systems that we do today. So, um, and so, you know, she was great. She referred me to a friend, um, an insurance agent. Um, and so he was actually my first paying client still pays me 200 bucks today. Um, still my client seven years, later, seven and a half years later, um, um, a health insurance client. And he was great. He was just pumping along, going good. And then Obamacare hit and, mm. you know, he still pays me because he's kind of switched. He's, he actually charges people to sign him up for Obamacare, which is pretty cool. Um, so he's still making an income from the website that ranks very well. Um, it's just, you just don't buy insurance through a broker anymore, like the yeah. old days. So, um, but then I started getting into home services and home services has always been my jam just because of, you know, I'm from the house flipping side, I had two construction companies. So I was very familiar with almost every aspect of construction with houses, um, you know, all the way from foundations to roofs. And so, um, I picked out a couple good niches, roofing and foundation repair, and I went for it. And um, today, I mean, we probably have 40 roofing companies. Um, nice. Still my favorite niche. Um, the main reason I like roofing companies um, is because they don't leave. They just leave me alone. You know, once you start ranking, they start getting busy and they start having leads. Yep. Um, you know, I try to do a monthly strategy call with all of our clients, but at least half of them just don't ever they don't even care as long as they're ranked, especially yeah. roofers. I used to manage some Google pay per click for roofers. That was one of my first clients too. And they were spending on Google ads at almost 20 K a month. Yep. And then, you know, they'd get, let's say just out of that, you get a couple of hundred leads and then they'd close, let's say 15, 20 roofs. That's not and very, they were happy, you know? Yeah. And I was like, you know, to me, I was like, it just didn't make sense. You're spending all that money. So we started doing SEO for them and everything else. Yeah, exactly. I mean, SEO, you know, we do pay-per-click for almost every one of our SEO clients. And most mm -hmm. of them, you know, I take a little bit of the money they pay me and I do pay-per-click. Yep. Um, I started doing that a couple of years ago just because I wanted the live data. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to know what are, especially after COVID, I want to know what are the search parameters have changed. 
how are people searching different than they did a year and a half ago or a year ago? Um, and you only find out about that through AdWords because um, everything else is historic data. So, um, but you know, I mean, all of a sudden they'll get leads and they'll close a lead and they hired me a week ago and they're like, geez, dude, what happened? I mean, how come I'm already getting leads? And I said, well, cause I'm paying for ads. Um, and so we have a conversation about them paying for ads because they do work. There's no doubt about it. I'm a, oh, yeah. I'm a big believer of doing both. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's just a good conversation to have. We're actually, I don't know if you saw the Q&A last night for Mads, but yep. we're actually looking at the model of just going in and talking about leads per month, not how we get them, not, not if it's, we're going to do organic, we're going to do pay-per-click, we're going to do Facebook ads, we're going to do whatever it takes to get you. To get you the calls and the leads. And then you're going to pay me each month for those leads. And if those leads go up each month, then your price goes up. So. Yeah. Um, I'm getting real tired of explaining the difference of, of ranking. I hate the term ranking. Yeah. I try to get all of our clients off of that as quickly as possible because it's so geo relevant now. You know, yeah. Google Google cares more about where you're located than where you're looking for. Correct. That's flat out. So for me to sit here in Tempe, Arizona, and talk to my lawyer in New York City, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna see different things. Yeah. And so I'm and most people don't get that. That's that is one of the most frustrating things I've even told people. I've considered making a video to explain SEO. Mm -hmm. You know, you take a tomato seed, go outside, plant it. And I said most of these people they go out the next day and say, you know, where's my tomatoes? I'm ready for a BLT sandwich, and yep. they're pissed off because there's no tomatoes. And it's like it takes a good period of time. And I said then it depends on where you're at. Have you cleared your cash? I've had people say, well, every time in my office, I see myself. But when I'm over here, I don't see myself. I'm like, did you clear your cache? Where, yeah. you know, what device are you using? You know, there's history on this and they don't get it. They just think yeah. they should be ranked everywhere. If I'm in Florida, my business is in Florida, anywhere in Florida, I'm ranked. And that's, that's not the way it works. Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, and so it's it's a frustrating conversation for us, you know, and um, one of the reasons that I'm so adamant about it is because I don't, I don't take money if I don't think I can help you. That's like my number one rule. If I can't help you, I'm not going to charge you. So, yep. um, you know, that's why I don't take on new niches a lot of times just because you you can't pay me enough to learn a new niche in order to make it successful. And so what's that, what are some type of niches you don't touch? Um, I don't touch anything, um, brick and mortar, um, shopping like a dress boutique or like a real, like a real retail yeah. type shop. Yeah, like I, I go to a local water store to get my water bottles filled up and he wants me to do SEO for him. Like, dude, I don't do SEO for bottles, water stores. I said, Oh, I'll do some stuff for your GMB. That's not a problem, but I'm not, don't count on me to bring in 30 people a day to your water store. That's not yeah. what I do. So it's not going to happen. Yeah. So, and I, and I, um, obviously I don't do any adult or anything like that. Um, yeah. but, um, I, I try to stick around home services. I like medical, um, medical, our side got hit pretty hard, um, for COVID. Um, mm -hmm. but still one of our favorite niches. Um, I like medical because the entrepreneurs in medical are, will listen to you. They'll take advice. They'll consult with you. They won't just go out and say, you know, Hey, I bought this freaking thousand links from this guy in Fiverr, you know, yeah. what the frick did you do that for? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and that's, you know, so the biggest thing that we like to do is just, it is a niche that I know about that I can feel comfortable in. Um, you know, we were really big in spray foam for a long time because it went hand in hand with roofing. Um, mm -hmm. We went into attic foam. Um, and then we kind of just watched the trends too. So we've been, I watched HGTV a lot. So I can kind of see the trends that they're doing that'll come into the marketplace. And so we, we kind of pre warn or pre get our clients ready for stuff like that. If so you're kind of, you're automatically doing research and looking for different things when, even when you're sitting there watching TV per se, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. so. So, and that's why the big thing about spray foam came in, you know, when you're spray foaming insulation, not just roof. I mean, the spray foam insulation is something that we hit pretty hard before it was kind of, you know, went everywhere, especially out here in Arizona. It's not very popular in Arizona just because we don't have big fluctuations of zero degrees to, you know, we're basically hot, warm, <laughs> 
So <laughs> you sound but, like the Philippines, really. <laughs> exactly. But the spray foam insulation helps immensely, you know, soundproofing. I mean, so there's a lot of good value to that. So that's kind of an example of the, something that we'll say, hey, that's going to be big someday. That's going to be people are going to realize that the old fiberglass insulation, as nasty it is to install, it's probably going to go away at some point. So, yeah. um, so it's just little things like that. But yeah, I don't, you know, and another thing about niches too is that I uh, also about the area. I I don't have a lot of stake in L.A., Phoenix, Chicago, New York. You know the big mm -hmm. places. Um, those are probably the four areas that I really look at hard before I take on a new client in those areas. Dallas is probably the largest city that we take on, pretty much no problem. But again, Phoenix is a bitch. L.A. is a bitch, and you know. The problem is, is that you have to charge so much to compete in those things. Yep. You know, I have the lawyer that we just talked on two months ago. This is a lawyer with three, three attorneys. He's in um, Orange County, and he was paying six hundred and fifty bucks a month and was wondering why he wasn't ranking. And I'm wow. like, well, you're paying a hundred thousand dollars a month for your freaking bus signs and your train signs and all the freaking print advertising you're doing. You need to spend a little bit over here on the marketing side for digital. And so, um, but those are the type of things that we do. Um, but, and, I, and I, I do a lot of white label too. I actually love white label. White label is probably my favorite just because I can help and teach the SEO company or the web company that I'm white labeling for. Um, you know, I, and I like teaching people. That's probably my favorite thing about the business is helping people, teaching people. I'm probably going to take on mentors again this year. I didn't do it last year. So um, just because I like, again, like you, I like teaching people. I like, you know, finding something that works and teaching it and then um, going against stuff that doesn't work, you know, that people are doing. And so and that's one of the things I liked in your interview when you were mentioning that sort of thing that you actually test stuff. Cause I usually, people ask me, well, even in our class, they'll say, you know, have you ever done this and does it work? And I said, well, I can't talk about that because I've never done it. And they're like, what do you mean you can't talk about it? I'm like, I've never done it. So how am I going to give you feedback on something I've never done? I can test it, but why should I test it if what I'm doing is working? Exactly. Um, yeah. But if ever to the point where I have to, then I'll test it and then I'll let you know, yes, it works. No, it doesn't work. So. Yeah. And there's some things, you know, I mean, the, the old, uh, we've all seen the citation wheels, you know, all the stuff that people do for GMBs, um, you know, the my map systems, which I still do my maps for my GMBs. Um, I just don't do crazy my maps. I do keyword specific my maps. Um, but there's, you know, the, the nice thing about what we do and how we can teach people, how we can help people. The biggest frustration is when they don't, they don't listen or they don't, put in the effort. I mean, I'd see the lack of effort in our business as being the worst thing. A lot. Um, and yeah, I had someone the other day, he's, he's in the class and he just, and I say this and a lot of people usually scoff at it, but I tell him for in, instance, just give you for instance, uh, post on your GMB on a daily basis, Monday through Friday. Right. And a lot of people say, no, you don't need to do that. No, you shouldn't do that. You know, it's just my experience and how I do it and what links I'm using and stuff. So the guy is in the class. The only thing he did in the past two weeks was do exactly what I said, do the GME post how I said. And then he went from ranking five and six to ranking two and three. Yeah. And I told him, I said, you know, like I've told you before, you know, all you got to do is follow instructions. If you'll follow instructions, you know, and do what I'm saying to do, then your rankings will increase. If you don't, and you just have this wild hair up your butt and think you're going to do it your way and then it doesn't work, well then don't come complaining to me, you know? So. Yeah. You know, and especially about, you know, I mean, it, and the thing about buying services from people is that you need to find out how often they update those services because it might've worked at one time, yep. but it might be obsolete now and maybe even quasi hurting you. So, um, you know, I mean, there's some good vendors out there, you know, Tony Peacock and some of these people that are just killer because I know that they're all constantly testing their services and upgrading yeah. their services and updating their services. And <laughs> those are the people that, you know, that I feel comfortable referring people to because, you know, I know what they're doing has been tested and it's all about testing. Um, that was the first thing that I did when I started going into pro SEO, not negative SEO. 
the first thing I did is I bought two match domains um, and I just started loading them up and testing stuff because I didn't know any better. I, I so didn't. Do you, do you think, because I know some people say yes, some people say no, do you think exact domain name match actually matters or works anymore? I do. I do them all the time. Okay. So, okay. Um, you know, but again, they, you have to understand they're only good for one service, one location. So yeah. you can't expand out of that. But um, I don't believe in it if you're like in Phoenix and you want to get the 15 little cities around it. That's yeah. not that's not it's what not going to happen. Yeah. But if you're in Oklahoma or Texas or Kansas and you have a town that's 150, 200,000 people and it's 40 miles away from the next town, you can kill or freaking just dominate that town with exact match domains. Um, yeah. about the same thing I say because it's also for instance just for me too I said if it doesn't work then then you go to GoDaddy or you go to Bluehost and you try to buy an exact domain name match that actually is a good one why are they selling it for five thousand dollars or yeah. even more sometimes if it didn't matter it wouldn't be selling it for that damn high of a price so yeah and it's you know and it's a long I do a lot of mass page still so especially mm -hmm. on the gen side um, I do a ton of mass page and you know, I like the idea of just dominating more places in the search. You know, we used to be able to have four, five, six, seven positions on the first page with the same website. And now that's obviously getting pretty much impossible. But if you have four websites that are the same niche in the same yep. location, now you can take multiple SERPs, you know, positions. What mass page builder are you using? Um, I use Directory Creator, which is Alex C. Barr's mass page builder. Uh -huh. Um, mm -hmm. that's the one that I found the most flexibility with because it's, it gives me, it's not a, just a push button and all of a sudden you've got 3000 pages. Yeah. Um, I, those mass that's, pages. That's since, why I got, I got away from, uh, honestly, I got away from doing mass pages for that very reason, because I was finding that you would do the mass pages. A, there would be errors. B, they wouldn't be indexing. And then, you know, sometimes Google would automatically set it to being no indexed. And so I just did not use them. And now, literally, let's for example, we'll create 50 to 100 location pages around a certain city, things to do, places to go, all that stuff. And it's all manual. Everything we do is manual. Exactly. And because I just haven't, I haven't found a quote unquote mass page builder that does what I want it to do. So. Well, the nice, thing about, curious. Yeah, the nice thing about Alex is, is it's all built on a spreadsheet. And then the spreadsheet is the page builder. So, and I like that flexibility. So and what's the name of that one again? It's directory creator. Directory creator. Yeah. I'll have to look at that. Yeah, Alex C. Barr's tool. Um, and I don't know if he's updated. I haven't talked to Alex in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do like the flexibility because I don't go after cities. I can, go, I can do mass pages around keyword structures. I can do mass pages around even you know, relevancy as far as um, different topics. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can do it if you have a spreadsheet compared to some of them use tags, some of them use, you know, load up these little boxes and push a button and all of a sudden you have all this yeah. stuff. And I'm like you, I'm, I don't go after every city in the state. I'll go after the top 20, you know, yeah. so. Um, That's one of the things I like about because in rank and rent is like someone will tell me they want to go after a roofers in let's say Orlando. Or roofer and Haley, and I could go. Let me go to Google Trends, put in the information, and it will tell me what cities are the most popular on those search terms. I was like, well, that city's not one you want to go after. Maybe you want to go after this one. Exactly. And I like I like that data that we can get from there too. So. Yeah, and it's just you know, like I said, it's um, you know, there's ways to do it. You know, once the you know, another thing I like about Alex's system is they're static, pages, so you can delete the plugin when you're done. The pages are there. Um, mm. The dynamic page system is actually dangerous, um, especially if you're using it on client sites. And two and a half. Yeah, that's years. what we were using before, and that's why I was like, I just stopped. Yeah, well, it can it can get you in a lot of trouble as an SEO, especially if your client doesn't know. And um, I I got I got consulted by a lawyer about two and a half years ago, and um, he just for an he hired me to do an audit and didn't tell me why or anything. So I did an audit and I was like, well, you said, it seems like you had a mass page builder system at one time and it's mm -hmm. gone. And now where Google is expecting 2,500 pages, they're only seeing 300, you know, I'm sure you've got 404 errors like freaking crazy, you know, yep. 
And so, yeah, that's what it was. He gave me access, you know, I put in Google search console and all the stuff that we have to do to find this stuff and um, put in the redirection plugin, which is my favorite 404 plugin. And all of a sudden, man, it just started <laughs> like ticker tape. I mean, it was just bam. And, yeah. and he, he sued this SEO company for 150,000 bucks in one. So wow. um, mainly because, you know, number one, it wasn't disclosed that he was building all these extra pages. And number two, it wasn't disclosed that once the contract was over, all these pages would disappear. He was gone. Yeah. So he took it all with him. We deal with that a lot. Yeah. Where a web design company will say they own the content, they own everything. And once you stop paying, they <coughs> you lose all of everything. So. Yeah, it's a, that's a rude way to do business, in my opinion. Yeah, I just had someone recently. They went through that, but luckily we were able to take care of that for them too. So. Yeah, we've had to do a way back machine build a couple different times on you know kind of stuff that was held hostage. So, so Michael's asking, what is a good redirect plugin that you use? What's the, the one you use? Redirection. Redirection. It's, it's called redirection. Yeah, if you go into WordPress, I'm pretty sure it's probably the same one I'm using. I just type in 404 redirect. Yeah. The, the one thing you'd never, ever, ever want to put in a plugin that redirects all your 404s to the home page. Yep. That will kill you. Um, and Google hates that. So yep. um, find a like page to redirect it, redirect it to. Don't just yep. go, oh, home page, oh, home page, oh, home page. So. Yep. Um, and that's the, yeah, redirection plugin is, you know, every time we load a new site, that's the first plugin we put in because I want to start capturing 404s. Um, mm -hmm. Every, especially WordPress, every new WordPress site is going to get 404s, even if you do the URL structure correctly, because you're still going to have images, you're still going to have, you know, the page number pages that don't redirect. And so you're still going to have work to do. So don't just think you can load a new website. And I did the URL structure because of Screaming Frog or Sitebulb or whatever you use. But and everything's fixed <laughs> by a plugin, which you hear that a lot. It's fixed. So especially yeah, <laughs> the one thing I've been seeing a lot lately, people have been bringing up too, is ADA compliance. What are you using for ADA compliance that um, makes it easy, especially when you're doing mass amounts of websites? or even just one or two websites where people are just, you know, I'm just a small agency doing five or six websites a month. Um, the big, we use ADA comply. Um, mm -hmm. that's a, it's a third party system. And the biggest thing about ADA is that it, I mean, in my mind, I actually had a person talking about it at our conference and, mm -hmm. um, it didn't go well, um, because of the way they presented it and then the way that their fix was. So, mm -hmm. Um, as far as I'm concerned, ADA comply is a real thing, but you know, ADA or excuse me, ADA compliance is a real thing, but ADA comply will put a snippet into your website and it'll download all your images into this third party tool. The most important thing with the ADA comply is images. Um, so you got to have alt tags. They can't be keyword stuffed alt tags. They've got to be real alt tags uh, mm -hmm. because you know, Understanding how ADA is to somebody that has, you know, vision issues or hearing issues. And the nice thing about ADA comply now, at least from what I can see, is a lot of it's on the browser based. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of browsers will help people that have these th that need these settings. But if you don't have an alt tag correctly, that can get you in a lot of trouble. Um, you know, I mean, are you going yeah, to the one, the one uh, is someone sent to me, they said, well, you got to do this and you go with this company and they give you this special code and then the whole site's ADA compliant. I said, yeah, it's going to add, you know, a couple hundred bucks every site you do soon. You know, no, most people are not going to pay for it. Yeah. You know, so. you know, one of the things that we've done differently on our on our design side is alt tags now are a thing. So. <laughs> Um, as they're building the websites, I want real titles and real alt tags. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't want, you know, deposit photo 694530. Yep. <laughs> so, um, and that's a big change for them because that does take more time. But I don't care because it's pre set up for whatever can happen. So, if somebody comes, yeah. we sell ADA as a secondary process. Um, you know, and it can be expensive, but it can also, there's tax write-offs and some of the stuff you can do with all that, but yeah, but it could be expensive if you're caught without it too. So definitely that's the whole thing is it's, I think it's one of the things that, you know, at some point 
there's got to be a system because there nobody really knows exactly what you need to be to be compliant. So and that's what I was saying. It's mainly it's like if you're dealing with hundreds of freaking websites a year or thousands, you want to tell me like every Wix site, every Weebly site, everything's ADA compliant? I doubt it. Yeah, ADA ADA gov isn't even compliant. So, <laughs> so um, you know, but but that is it not surprise me. The government <laughs> enforces it, and their site's not even compliant. <laughs> exactly. So, but you know, but there are things we can do as web designers or SEOs to make it, you know, to where hopefully they won't get in trouble. And I tell people all the time. I sent out a mass email to all of our clients, and I told them, I was like, "Look, can you get in trouble? Yes. Are you a target right now? No." You're not, but you're not a big enough target. Yeah. You know? So, and as Colin said, most of the ones they're going to go after is these huge lawyers or huge doctors, people they know has the damn money. They're not going to go after Mr. Painter that does, you know, 10 jobs a month or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that's the same thing I got from my roofing clients. My roofing clients, like, yeah, F you, you know, I'm not going to freaking pay five grand for ADA compliance. You know, so, <laughs> um, I had a client before he was, he was Spanish and, he had someone say, you know, I always told him, don't use someone else's images, right? Yeah. And he uses someone else's images and they send this cease and desist letter. And he says, respond back to him and say, no habla English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least that didn't go over too well, but he got out of it anyway. So, but yeah, it, it is a thing. You have to pay attention to it. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a fear factor guy. Um, yeah. like, you know, a lot of people are that, oh my gosh, every website needs to do this. You need to spend all this money or you're going to get in trouble. And, you know, I actually think at some point, I think it's probably going to get even laxer. Um, yeah. because right now I think it's just one way or the other. You're either compliant or you're not compliant. Is there, is there rules? Well, what does that mean? We still can't get definition yeah. of what that means. So, um, as far as I know, the new WordPress updates are all ADA compliant. I know Aveda, um, the theme is ADA compliant. Um, so we know the tools that we're using is compliant. It just depends on what we or the client. Your, defini your definition of compliance. Yeah, exactly. So, and the worst part about it is, is once you have your website done and the client goes away and you say, hey, you're compliant and they go in and make changes. Then yeah, they're not compliant. Not, not compliant. So. You know, um, I have I've I know people that will charge, you know, a thousand bucks a month just to keep you ADA compliant. Well, oh, wow. you know, so, you know, again, yeah. that's the fear factor thing. And again, it is real. I'm not going to it's like COVID. It's, I'm not going to deny it's not real. It's, yeah. just, you know, it's being not a, as dramatic as you want to make it out to be. Yeah, exactly. It's getting a little COVID's bit. Real. It's just not going to come along and make everybody a bunch of zombies. Exactly. <laughs> so, but, you know, like I said, it's it. it you know, if you, I think if you just use the titles and alt tags and all your images, you're going to be 90% of the head of the game. So, because I think that's the biggest way they find out who's non compliant is through images. So, hmm. but if you want to see how it works, it's on my site. You click the little um, wheelchair on the left. Yeah, hand. I saw it. It's really cool. You know, it's, uh, has the wheel on the left hand side and everything, so and the text size and everything. So that's pretty exactly. cool. So that's you know, obviously, you know, I get a lot of traffic to my site. I mean, I'm not worried about getting hit for ADA comply unless it's the guy that spoke at my conference that I got into it with. Um, <laughs> yeah, the whole idea though is just you know, I mean, just do what's right and you know, try to try to build them properly. You know, you and I both see websites that are just like, what the frick are these people thinking? You know. Especially when you go into image files, you're like deposit photo, deposit photo. You know, it's just like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. So that's um the biggest you know, biggest reasons. I said whenever you're uploading a file, is to a make sure they're yours. B make sure you're actually naming them what the hell they are, not you know 2005 deposit this stock photo, blah blah blah. Yep. You know, and um, make sure they're changed accordingly. So. Exactly. And you can, you know, geotag. You get a lot of people asking me, do you still geotag? And um, I mean, we do, we, we don't do it. We've actually removed it from the SOP as a mandatory. It's now more as an optional. Um, mm -hmm. So depending on the client and what they want to do, if they're going to become an SEO client, we're more likely to do some, you know, geotagging at the beginning. Um, but again, it's an extra step that 90% of it gets stripped, um, at least on the Google side. Um, yeah. 
we do geotag and we put our geotag images up in Amazon S3 buckets. And so we'll mm -hmm. call those out for, you know, GMBs and, you know, social media and stuff like that. Um, we do know Google, um, Google doesn't strip out all the EXIF data. Um, if it's on the GMB side, if it's a mobile picture. So mm -hmm. that's uh, what I tell people. It depends on the device or what website you're putting it on, because exactly. some, if you could put it on one site and they'll put it all up there, then you go to do Google or GMB and they'll strip most of it. Mm -hmm. You know, but whereas I used to tell people, no, I do all the geotagging, the keyword, quote unquote, put the keyword stuffing and all that crap in there. Yeah. And Google started stripping it. And then I've even heard um, a popular GMB um, software mentioned that they actually, quote unquote, if you use the API, it doesn't strip it. But whenever I've looked at it and I have another guy's actually looked at it, too, he says, no, it's actually stripped. It's even with the API. Uh, I agree. I mean, it's just, you know, if you do the title, the alt tag, and even the description, most of the time those stick. Um, yep. and, you know, and don't keyword stuff the description, you know, because, yep. you know, just, you know, anything that you do, you want to try to make sure it's clean. It's natural. Yeah. Not the painter in Orlando, Florida is seen here painting a nice two story house seen in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's natural. It's kind of like reviews. I teach my clients how to get and respond to reviews. You know, you want to try to include, you know, the service and the location in the review and the response. So especially the response. Um, you don't but, want it to look crazy. Exactly. But you don't want to be stupid about it. You know, hey, it was great to see Tommy come out here and fix my foundation that was cracked six inches on the right hand side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my home, my poor home in Scottsdale is so old and they fixed. I mean, it's just, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, literally, I had someone just in class ask me, he said, um, have you ever tried posting like, you know, 10,000 words on your GMB posts and stuff? And I was just like, then no. let me. I said, number one, I said, you're not going to be able to. Number two, I don't, I mean, to me, to me, it looks spammy. I said, much less to Google. Yeah. You know, it's so. Google, getting better. I mean, you know, I mean, I remember the old days when we were able to put our main keywords in the in the yeah. copyright bar, you know, yeah. and and that right there would just bump up your whole friggin' site. But you know, yeah. now that's kind of you know a death nail. So um, yeah, I told him that I remember the day someone someone said because we do um, so on our location pages we go things to do, places to go, I still common do. articles, all that stuff. Yep. And I just something that I picked up that I said, hey, works. So I use it. And someone said, well, why don't you use um, CSS? You could use CSS to hide it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, for me, I'm just telling you for me, that would probably look kind of suspicious to Google. Um, why are you hiding this data? Even if they're not punishing you now, but for me, it just kind of looks suspicious. You know, when I got started, SEO was before Black Hat was called Black Hat. Yeah. And I said, you would literally just keyword stuff a damn page and you'd be on page one or, hey, you need 5,000 backlinks. I do it and it costs you $3,000 or whatever. And you're on page one within a week. Yeah. You know, so I don't suggest a lot of those things, mainly because it's a fear because I've been through Panda and Penguin before and it's not pretty. And I don't want to do something that may or may not work or may or may not affect the rankings and then yep. may or may not get Google's looking at my stuff. Yeah, we, we do the same thing. I, I still put in all the city data, um, even more on the schema side. Um, mm -hmm. But we just put it in accordions. We've always put it in accordions. Um, I've seen, I did an audit on a site about three or four weeks ago and they had a whole bunch of um, hidden header tags um, mm -hmm. or we call them blended um, ghost mm -hmm. tags. But you know, and that's just, that's an old tool that, you know, can Google see it or not? Well, you know, let's, let's look at a different scenario. Why do you have 22 freaking H1s on your website and only one showing to the public? You know, yep. that's what Google sees. So yeah, and I've had people say, well, you could, uh, another one they asked me about recently, you could, why don't you put text behind the image? and hide it or push it off with CSS. And I was like, yeah. well, I could probably guarantee you Google's going to see that stuff. And as soon as they see you, you're slapped. Yeah. And sure. I'm not going to take the chance. Yeah. That's like when I put my city page, one of my city pages in there, I put in the presentation um, mm -hmm. because it is, you know, I do believe that, you know, we've, we've done some testing on, 
you know, 50 50 between service data and city data. Um, we actually found the best results of 60% city data, 40% service data. So that's kind of like the formula we try to stay around in. Um, mm -hmm. But in the bigger cities like Phoenix, the page I used um, in my presentation is a much, much harder, you know, page to rank. So um, yeah, when, we do the, when we do those city and neighborhood pages, we get those ranked very fast. Yeah. And, uh, using that data and information and stuff. So um, on your schema, I mean, talk to me about your schema because I hear you, you're the schema master and everybody's they're asking about schema. So mm -hmm. that's a big one for me. I mean, what, you know, I know you can't say what you charge because it varies from play, you know, website to website, niche to niche, but how long does it usually take you for your data? You know, you're setting up your schema and, you know. um, doing, just to give you an idea, we're doing a large e-com site right now. Um, mm -hmm. and the site-wide schema, and then we're doing the brand schema and the product schema. They don't have any services. Um, the biggest thing, when we price these things, we price them in line item detail so people can have a choice. Um, but this e-com site came in probably around close to 10 grand just for the schema. Uh, wow. But, you know, they've got, you know, 34 brands and they want to have a hundred product schema out of the, I think they have 5,000 products and they want to try to test it with the first hundred, the best hundred. So mm -hmm. top, the top hundred. So once, that, once, that, once those come through and do good though, they're going to follow up with the rest more than likely. Exactly. And you know, one of the things that we do, um, we give them the template files that, you know, for their library. Um, if they want to take and do another hundred on their own, totally fine with me. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, it, like, it really does depend. And it's, you know, one of the things that I ran into a few weeks ago is I did schema on this site and it actually dropped the site. And when I, the guy was just like, oh my gosh, your freaking schema doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And when I did an audit on a site, it's a site. The schema just brought Google in to realize how bad his freaking site was. Yeah, I didn't pay attention to it. I wasn't hired for that. So you're just hired uh, to do the schema. So when the schema comes in with all the machine IDs and all the data, and then you know they penalize you, or they either penalize you or they you know they say good job, basically. Exactly. So you know a normal a good schema on a normal website will increase it every time. But if you have it's like link building. When I used to sell links, I don't sell links anymore. And the main reason I don't sell links anymore is because of the same thing is that I know my links are good, especially if it's in the niche that I choose to sell them in. And all that good link is going to do is show Google a bad website. So, um, you know, if you have a website that is, that is fighting, you know, keyword cannibalization, cannibalization is probably the biggest challenge right now because Google's getting really good at, you know, <coughs> realizing from a page structure what the website is and now all of a sudden you're trying to rank your home page for every freaking thing which is my biggest pet peeve and mm -hmm. so you're ranking your home page for one term and your main inside page is just struggling because you can't replace the two and mm -hmm. you know and when schema comes in schema will will just especially in the header i mean you might have a website that's really never been crawled properly mm -hmm. uh, i i hate the fact that they took away fetch and render from us because that was our crawl to see yeah. the, the crawl depth and there's a couple tools out there i'm testing right now that say they can do the same thing but the idea is is that you know schema is always in the head it's always going to get crawled no matter what and so once you install our type of schema it's going to bring google yahoo and bay basically puts a spotlight on it whether it's a good you know good you know website or bad website you're going to get the spotlight Exactly. And this website that I was looking at that, you know, the guy complained about, I mean, he averaged 384 words on a page. I'm like, dude, you know, I've got more than that in the schema. So of course Google <laughs> that, you know, do anything with you. And he, it wasn't like he was ranking really good before he was second, third page. He just dropped the fourth and fifth page. And, yeah. and I told him like, dude, you need to do some technical SEO work. You need to, you know, bump up your content, you know, a thousand words minimum. You know, and then just, you know, fix the crap that you have. Your scheme is fine. So, um, and last I heard from a week or so ago, everything's back up again or going back up. So, um, so don't just think any, any kind of service that you buy is going to be the end all to be all. You know, I don't care if it's mine. It's not, it's not the miracle weight loss pill. And everybody thinks it always is because you're an SEO guy. You're the SEO guru. 
you're yeah. the schema you're the schema dude and i pay 10 grand and then voila i should be a number one or two or three or whatever in gmb and then they tank well yeah. they got the rest of the other stuff they got to take care of their on page and they're linking external linking and all that other stuff so. it, it, it all matters you know i mean i've had people contact me and you know especially on the gmb side and they bought a service from somebody web 20 or whatever and they didn't see much luck and i was like well let's look and see what the links or whatever they're doing is going to and yeah. we'll probably find the problem you know yeah. um chaz and get those your, guys, get, your, get your foundation set correctly yeah and that's the biggest thing you know me and marie and moon and i talk about this all the time um you know because what we do to improve websites is it'll affect the entire site and if the entire site's not ready then you know it's kind of like the old prosperity thing if you're not ready to to receive a million bucks you're not going to receive a million bucks yeah. you know so if your website's not ready to capture the serps and the tracking and the rankings you're not going to do it no matter what you do so um, you know, that's the biggest problem with a lot of the services out there is because they promise them the world um, just by my one off service or by these high DA links or these niches and these blogs. And then yeah, I got these niche citations. They're going to do a miracle for you. And then they find out nothing. Doesn't yeah. Do shit. And yet they yeah, they four grand out the pocket. Yeah. Probably not even indexed. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of freaking, you know, we all deal with the same stuff. It's just, you know, how much do you do to make sure that the stuff you're selling or the services that you're using, you know, are working, you know? And so, you know, I'll complete, like Tony Peacock, as far as I'm concerned on the GMB side, has the best packaged services I've seen. Um, mainly because just, like I said, he tested all over the place. That's everything. Um, you know, and that's, that's good. Web 20 is the same way. They, you know, Chaz and those guys do a lot of great things in the GMB side. So, um, you know, it, but it's still, it, it, it probably is not going to be a magic bullet. There's no magic bullet. <coughs> I mean, especially with GMBs because they fluctuate so much. And, you know, I personally think that it's the area that Google is spending the most time on out of their divisions. They're spending the most time on the GMB side, you know, because they, that's where they can see more money grab. They can, you know, we're all seeing now they've got a call button. Now you can fill out a form in your GMB. So they're doing all these things to make traffic to your actual website non-existent. And yeah, we were just looking at one today for real estate because real estate's not, I actually talked to the guy out of going with me, but I don't do real estate usually. That's mm -hmm. one area I don't use. And it's just because it's really, really difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I don't know. The only time I take on realtors is if they're, uh, if they're hyper located, yeah, you know, one area. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you do searches now, and I've seen because I don't look at this too often, but now they have the ads or sponsored ads where they are not verified, but basically approved by Google or they've been validated by Google. Yeah, to be a good realtor and stuff. And I was like, those are all just paid ads, really anymore. And it's like I've had people ask me, "Do you think GMB will ever go away and just be paid ads?" And I'm like. I don't know. It could. I mean, anything's possible. But I just don't think they would. It don't make sense to me. But I think they're going to turn it rather than doing that. I think they're going to turn GMB into just a web page on itself. Yeah. That's what I think the goal is. I don't think it's going to re be replaced by paid ads because Google's, Google's already got a problem because at least in America, we've got a very large population, 30 percent plus that do not click on ads. They just won't. You know, they they know that, you know, are getting or they're learning that you can be a, a guy in a white panel van and put up a plumbing ad and freaking go rip people off. So, yeah. you know, at least if you're in the maps organically and or, you know, the search organically, you've probably been around at least a decent amount of time to be able to yeah. do something. So um, like my mom will never click on a paid ad again, you know, mainly just because I keep telling her not to, but yeah. um, you know, but the, you know, I, when I search in Google for services, I go to the second and third page and hire those guys because I typically try to get them on as a client. You know, yeah. so I'll hire the tree trimmer from third page and, you know, bring them on a client, you know, and say, hey, you want to be on the first page? <laughs> so, you know, so um, always be marketing. You know, my biggest, most, my biggest tool is my window on the back of my truck. If you go to my Facebook page, you can see my window back there. That window cost me 150 bucks. And we probably get five to eight leads a month from it. And, uh, you know, and it's my biggest ROI by far. 
of money mm -hmm. I spent compared to the leads we get. So always be marketing is, is the biggest thing. Always look to see how so you I was noticing what you were saying, even when you're watching the home channel or HGTV, you know, you're constantly seeing and doing research because you're not just quote, you're, you're watching it just to chill out, but you're also while you're relaxing after a long day, you're also noticing trends and stuff like that, not just drowning it out with some TV, you know? Exactly. You know, and that's, you know, we do the same thing on the, even though I don't take on restaurants, um, you know, we do help some restaurants on the reputation management side of it. And so, um, but when we're watching food channel or whatever, and these cooking shows, you know, I'll always joke around with them and, Hey, did you see that pizza they made on this show? <laughs> Not that they're going to change their menu or anything, but it's always a good topic of conversation because it's, you know, these restaurant people are, you know, it's probably the most competitive thing on the planet. You know, so not only do you have to have good food, but you have to have good service. So, so one of the things the guys asked, it was in, it's in the, in the chat. Cause he asked me, I asked if you tried to put 10,000 words all together in GMB. In other words, if you have 40 services and you make separate posts with 250 words in it, and would that help your rankings in regards to those services? Um, we do know, and this again is something we're trying to figure out how to basically expand. We do know um, more content loaded, the better the the better results. So we know that from a blogging standpoint, and we know that from the GMB post standpoint. Um, I didn't do GMB posts for a long time until about two months ago because they were disappearing so quick, and it was. You know, now they're sticking a little bit longer and, you know, and you can do more things with them. You know, when GMB post first came out, you couldn't put a link back to your website. Now you can. Yeah. So, um, but I think the time it would take to do that. I mean, you're talking, gee whiz, you know, you're talking. What? This guy I know in specific has VAs. So, you know, I mean, the biggest thing I can do is pick a GMB and test it. You know, yeah, I mean, that's what I was telling them when we talked about it. As this song said, I've never done it, but I, if you want to know my opinion, I would test it. Yeah, because it's test easy it, to see if it works. Yeah, it's an easy test to do. Um, if, if you need it works, it, then let me know. <laughs> I got plenty of GMBs if you want to test it. Um, but, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing is you know, don't take our word for it. And and because Google's not going to tell us, Google's going to say, hey, you know, hey, if you blog more or you post more, we're going to give you a benefit for it. Well. We all know to feed Google's ego is success. So yeah, he's uh, commenting. He said, not in the post, but actually in the services or the products. I don't think yeah. you can put that many words in a in a service or product. I think yeah, you're he's asking. I don't think I think it's like at most a sentence, if that. So. Yeah. I don't again just see what you're see what you can get away with. You know, we have tested mass amounts of content with links going to the GMB that worked, mm -hmm. but it wasn't through the GMB posts. It was more um, through blogs or through syndication systems uh, mm -hmm. or something like that. But the Google post thing is still kind of new to me just because, you know, I just think it was a way for Google to capture more content that they could use whatever they want to use. Um, but we are doing it more often. We schedule them out just like anything. We try to drip them a few a week. Um, but again, to, to take those out, um, and we typically do it with the blog. Like if we just loaded a blog on Solterra site, I'll take part of that blog and I'll load it to the GMB. So yeah, micro content it out. Yeah. And you know, um, angel Cruz at one time was building a plugin to do that automatically. If you did a blog post on your WordPress site, it would take a snippet of that and load it in the GMB post. Mm -hmm. um, That's one thing I was trying to do is take your GMB posts and actually have them fed into the website. But I haven't found anything that would do it because you'd need a different, from what I've, from what I've seen, you'd have to have a different API for each GMB and have it custom built for each each client and everything and just would not for me it's just not feasible yeah well content's becoming a big issue for all of us um because our tests are showing that the sites that are blogging every single day or even multiple times a day are doing a lot better than the ones that aren't um but how do you scale that you know how do you yeah, i just posted something about that the other day depending on it, if they're national international stuff like that some of them are po blogging five times a day
Yep. Exactly. You know, it's insane, but I tell them so I barely can get a you know client to want to pay for a blog a month, much less you know several blogs a day. So yeah, and so that's you know so we're testing some different you know content tools. Um, I actually have a developer kind of building one for us that I want to do, um, but it's not something I'm going to put on my medical sites. I'll throw it on my roofer site because they really yeah. don't care. They don't even know I'm blogging. But um, if people are paying attention to the content, then you know, you kind of need to have a conversation with your clients and say, look, you know, this part has now become, you know, will help you a lot. It's just going to be an extra bit of money every single month. So, um, so that's the biggest thing is, you know, it's constantly changing, especially when you test a lot, you're like, dang it, that freaking works. <laughs> now I got to freaking implement it everywhere. You know, one thing I did recently and I went over this, you know, with some people is I just found this out. You can actually right click on your GMB post, grab the image and insert it into a PR or insert it into a blog post or wherever you want. And it actually, when you look at the code, it's still showing the Google CID information from that GMB location. That's cool. Yep. And I did, you know, I, I stumbled, it wasn't something I just went, Oh, let me test this on purpose. It was just, let me right click one time. And then I seen, it, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and then let me do it. And then I even went so far as to say, cause someone in the course said, well, what if, you know, it gets deleted, right. And it gets deleted or rejected or whatever. Um, it's then going to show a broken link. And I said, actually, no, I've tested that. I did it on a page, then went back into the post, deleted it off of Google and it never broke. Yeah. So that was interesting to see. Yeah. But I, I loved constantly testing stuff. So yeah, that's those are the tests that I like to do. Like we stack press releases. Um, I test Amazon S3 buckets a lot because um, you know I've always Amazon's always been the little secret weapon for a lot of us because a lot of people yeah. use a lot with Amazon. Amazon's just right. the, you know nice thing about Amazon it doesn't strip nothing. It's all follows. Um, you know, and those are all good to use. You just need to test and see how you use them. I don't, we actually built a site and put the images from Amazon on the site and it didn't do very well. So, um, so we don't do that anymore, but we do put, um, you know, like press releases, we'll use the Amazon images. Um, and then, you know, we do a press release and then I'll, um, do embed, I'll embed all the links from one press release into the other press release. Um, and you know, it's, we that work very very well yeah and it's um it's one of my favorite things is stacking i i <laughs> i used to be called the stacker guy because i stack everything google stacks you know syndication stacks pr stacks um and again it's just all again you get these how, are you, how are you using it because a lot of people they'll say i hear it all the time g stacks don't work or you know cloud stacks don't work and i'll tell them say well how are you stacking it because I do the same thing, but I do different things with them. And I can tell you, they definitely work. They definitely work. Um, you know, Google's not going to penalize themselves. So, yeah. um, so we, we, we do keyword stack. So if we're working on a page and that page has the main keyword, we'll do a stack for that page. Um, most of the time that'll become the tier one buffer um, mm -hmm. for our link building. And, um, and we do that on purpose. You know, I don't send a lot of links directly to the websites anymore. We use a lot of buffers um, and we use a lot of tier linking and Google sites or Microsoft sites or all the different ones that we build. Those are just great vehicles to filter through. Um, yep. And they, they all index pretty quickly. They stay indexed. I mean, I've got, I've got Google sites that are outranking, you know, client sites. So, and we didn't do anything special to them except for build links to them. Yeah, uh, that's kind of the same thing we do too, because I found the same thing indexing and then Google's not going to penalize themselves. <laughs> no, no. So. Yeah, I mean, I've thrown everything in the kitchen sink at these things and tests and it's, okay. you know, not one thing has said, Oh shit, that didn't work. So, yeah. Um, the only thing about them, people think they can build a stack and then that's all they can do. Well, yep. you need to do something with the stack. You need that's to either, generally, they think it doesn't work once they've done it and then they don't do nothing with it. And that's what they'll say, you know, what are you doing with it after it's built? Exactly. You know, and most of them know, I just went on Fiverr and I seen this, you know, miracle, you know, thing and it's supposed to work or, 
you know, and they think it's going to work like a miracle weight loss pill and say, no, you got to do other stuff with it. Are you sending backlinks or high DA links or what are you doing with it? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's 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 just another system, you know, as part, of your, as part of your link plan, you know, and one of the biggest mistakes I see people make in this business is, you know, on page is one thing, which I, I personally think on page is the most important, without a doubt. Um, right. You and I have both ranked sites without any links, at yeah. least link building. Okay, yeah. so we might have a stack, we might have a syndication system or something, but as far as going out trying to get links on purpose, yeah. you, you can you can rank it without it. You can. I told someone the other day, it's like you could you could use this schema, put the schema on it, and then said and have it rank. Exactly. So this depends. I said, and it just depends from everybody always asks, what all do you do to the sites as far as backlinking and everything? I said, you know, I don't come out with guns blazing in a bazooka or a Gatling gun if I don't have to use it. Yeah. You know, you, I'll sit there and say, what do we need to use? What don't we need to use? You know? And that's the biggest thing. That's why no two clients or no two sites are the same. You know, we've, we've checked population doesn't matter. You know, we've had sites in, you know, Tyler, Texas and Longview, Texas, they're kind of the same thing, same size and two completely different variables, you know, so, you know, some might need a little push from links, some might need nothing as far as links, you know, so um, it just, you can't, that's one of the reasons why we don't do package pricing, because I think package pricing does a disservice because you're, mm -hmm. you know, if you have 500, 1500, $2,500 pricing structure, you know, you're going to, you're either going to hurt the client or you're going to hurt yourself. You yeah. know, so um, that's why we, we have a discovery form and it's a very long discovery form. That's how I weed out most of the tire kickers. Cause if you can't spend 15 minutes to fill out my form, then you're not going to be a client anyway. So, um, and we do that on purpose just to make sure that, you know, we can capture as much data as we need to make a, at least to put a solution together. Um, we don't send proposals without a phone call. Um, I have proposals that I've done that are sitting there without ever being sent out because they didn't want to schedule. Phone call, yeah. um, you know, so, you know, and we do all our stuff online. I don't send PDF proposals. We have a whole online proposal system. And, and we do that for a reason because that way I can track how many times they go into it. I can track how many times they see it. I can see how much time they spend on it. Um, you know, I can lock it down, send them a username and password so I can see every time they log in. So, um, you know, all that stuff is done to weed out tire kickers. Um, yeah. you know, this, we get a lot of organic leads and, um, on the web design side, you know, those are pretty, you know, those are pretty good leads on the SEO side. You know, I'm competing with the hundred, 200, $300 a month guys out there. And I'm yeah. not, I'm, I'm not one to compete with that. So, um, I don't even go down that road. So. Um, we also sell a lot of audits. I think if you, especially if it's a decent sized client, I think if you don't do a real good audit, I'm not talking about your basic audit, throw it in Ahrefs and no, oh, here you go. Um, I'm talking about doing a real audit, competitor audit, link audit, you know, on page audit, technical audit, um, really get an idea, but charge for it. You know, don't do it for free. You know, I'll charge up to 2,500 bucks for an audit, you know? just to see if it's even a good fit. And most of them will pay it if you come at it like, well, let's see what's going on. You know, I don't ever, one thing you got to not do, and this is, I learned this the hard way, is you can't bash what they've already spent money on. First of all, they, they already know and probably are pissed off that they spent money and lost money or got ripped off or whatever. So you don't want to harp on that going, oh, I don't know why this guy did this and this and this and you know, don't even go down that road. Just talk about what you're going to do to help the right. situation that they have. It doesn't matter who did it. It doesn't matter when it happened. It's a how problem. are you going to resolve it and how are you going to be the solution to what they need? Exactly. So don't come at this thing like, oh, I'm better than these you know, jerks over here because I do it so much better and so much differently and they shouldn't have done this. And, oh, my gosh, we got to get rid of this. I don't tell people 90 percent of the stuff that I'm getting ready to do to their website because it would it would probably make them puke that they even paid money for it. So yeah. I don't even go down that road. I'm just like, this is your problem. This is what we need to fix. And this is how much it's going to cost to fix it. You know, I've got, I've got proposals or I've got clients right now that all they've paid for is the first month. I don't, we haven't even talked ongoing yet because yeah. we can fix the current problem. 
Now, once we fix the current problem, now we can look and see, okay, what do we need to do to get you here? And how much is it going to cost? And how long is it going to take? So, um, and we know, at least on our side, that a bad SEO takes 10 times longer to fix than no SEO. Yep. So, um, and that's what I tell a lot. Of, I actually have called people out on Facebook that, you know, have done bad SEO on websites. And I've called them out and said, you stop doing this. You know, I'm having to charge this guy thousands of freaking dollars to fix what you did. And that's not right. That's not right for the consumer. I don't give a shit if you're overseas and, you know, you don't care. You're feeding your family. That has nothing to do with it. You know, yeah. if your client isn't priority, then get the hell out of the business. You know, yeah, I agree. Um, I've seen a lot of it myself. So it's like, and it's the same thing. So, and we'll have them, they'll spend $4,000. I mean, I have the exact opposite where they'll spend the $4,000 with the big names and then, you know, I have one, he literally hired the best in the business over in Australia. And it just, I mean, the only thing, the only thing they really did was collect money. That's about it. I'll leave it at that. And, yep. you know, this, there's nothing, you know. Yeah. I mean, big agencies are the worst. I mean, I, I specifically go after certain agencies clients, you know, because yep. they're dumb enough to put their freaking signature in the copyright bar. Um, so I'll go out and scrape all your freaking clients and I'll go after them. So, um, cause once you, once you have larger agencies have bad sites, they do it on every site. It's not like you have some rock star on their staff that's doing it differently. They're following a system to bring in the most capital and revenue they can. So, uh, so don't be afraid of the big agencies, Scorpion and these other ones, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to knock down. Um, Talk to me a little bit about, because before you get off, um, spring training, SEO spring training. Yeah, we're, that gonna be? And, um, uh, we're still kind of kicking it around. Usually we do it every April. Um, last year, we were the first live concert to have to swap um, to digital real quick. And we had basically yeah. had two and a half weeks to do it. Um, and we did it. And it was super successful. It was eight days, 72 speakers. Um oh it was uh it was just awesome so this year i've been kind of holding back because i really want to do a real live one a, at least a small live one plus the digital so um we're still trying to figure it out um we're not going to do it in april but we're thinking of there's a couple things we've, we're looking at you know we might even think about seo fall training so maybe doing it after the summer see if people are a little bit more comfortable and you oh, know yeah. me i put 100 people in a room right now we'd have a conference but Unfortunately, yeah. it's not up to me. So um, we do know the hotels here in Phoenix are all opening up. They're, you know, we're not really having huge limitations. You know, 50 people to get in a room is pretty easy right now in Phoenix. But it's still how comfortable people are to come here. That's, yeah. the That's the so, fact. Yeah. Um, you know, because I'm not going to have any conversation with, you know, if you're if you're worried about this then you need to be worried about it. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to say anything else, yeah. you know. But I want to really try to do both. And if we can't, we're at least going to do a digital one. Um, but, you know, it is it is one of our passions. You know, I started this conference um, mainly because I've been to so many conferences that you just didn't get anything from. You know, um, you know, I spent three days in Dallas. I can't remember the name of the conference. And I came out of there and, you know, I was actually upset. You know, I was upset that, you know, the amount of money that I paid and the people that I look forward to seeing really didn't tell me anything. You know, I tried to meet with them after the fact, but the, there was no time with the speakers. And, yeah. and so one of the things that we wanted to do is not only are you going to get to spend time with all the speakers, but you are going to get takeaways because we're in the beginning of it. We didn't record um, and we weren't going to you know monetize it afterwards. So you were SEOs were able to just lay it out there. This is what works. This is what doesn't work. Black hat, white hat, green hat, gray hat, doesn't matter. Um, the second year, obviously, we had to record. Um, but still, we got great value out of everybody. That was like, you know, my big number one rule was you have to provide value. Don't come up here and give me a standard PowerPoint presentation and don't give me any action items. I want something that people can go back to their room that night and implement. You know, yeah, action. Uh, yeah. And so we had, you know, our the very first one. I mean, we introduced Marty Marion to the world, which was incredible. Um, you know, we had people, Clint and, you know, all, you know, all the good people that are out yep. there. 
on the first one. Um, and it was more of a test thing. Let's see how this goes. I think we had 65 people show up, so it wasn't huge. But, you know, but it was awesome. It was fun. So the next year, we stepped it up, man. We freaking, we got a really cool hotel. You know, we spent, I think, $12,000 to market this thing. We were going to go for it. And then COVID hit. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so we... We did. We we switched it to digital, um, which was nice. You know, we still it was a good platform. You know, it was a live event, so you're able to ask questions live. Um, yeah. Everything was recorded, so we we're able to give people recordings um, if they missed it. And you know, it kind of, in my mind, it kind of set the you know, the split the platform for the other people that did the SEO conferences digitally after. So. Um, cause I had a lot of people contact me that do conferences and goes, man, that was awesome. How, how'd you do it? What tools did you use? You know, and it's, it's a lot of work, you know, Matt didn't do his conference digitally, you know, and I, I get that it's, it's, I think it was more work to put the digital side on than it was to do the live event. So yeah, I would uh, think so too, you know, and it's just, but like I said, it's, it's a great conference. Um, you know, great people. These are friends of mine um, that we get to speak. You know, we were going to bring over, you know, Craig Campbell. It was going to come over. There was going to be three or four speakers from overseas going to come in for it. And, you know, and that's still my goal. That's why I want to see if we can hold off maybe another couple months before we start working on this, but kind of just, you know, feel out the you know, the landscape and yeah, it's been my fear is like, um, we just got to the point where we could start traveling again, but people are like, why don't you come back to the States and, you know, do some stuff over here. And I said, well, my thing is I have a daughter with a grandchild here, yeah. a wife and two ch other, two other children. I said, my fear is if I leave and go back there to do anything and then can't get back here. Yeah. You know? So I'm kind of stuck here for right now. And then that's why, you know, that's the whole thing. It's just, you know, do, am I going to have be stuck? Am I going to, you know, am I going to be worried the whole time? You know, I mean, it's just, you know, you're dealing with people's emotions and feelings. And it's, you know, I just want to provide a product that people are going to be happy with. That's the biggest thing is because if you're not happy, then I failed. So, you know, one of the first things I wanted to do in the first conference was and I told myself, if I get one speaker, to come up to me afterwards and say, man, that was awesome. Then that was success. And, and I had multiple speakers and that was, that was like the cool thing for me because if they got something out of it, after all the stuff that they've seen and do and speak at, then I know everybody else got something out of it. So yep. um, that's the that, biggest thing. Like a while, why I like doing the teaching and stuff and the live Q and A's is I learned so much from everybody else. Yeah. You know, it's not just, I tell them, so it's not just, quote unquote, me doing this course or getting them speaking. I want to hear from other people. There might be something you've done that I've not done. Totally. You know? So, and then, you know, we all learn from each other. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. It's just, you know, you want to be able to provide a, a service you want. You know, I started this thing because I got so freaking sick of what people were being taught or not being taught, you know, and Facebook groups are a lot of that too. You know, I actually personally yeah. think Facebook groups are, are the worst thing for SEO. I mean, you can get some good nuggets out of there, but people really take that stuff as gospel and they go out and they put it on five different websites without even looking to see what the results are going to be, you know? Yeah. So, you know, that's the biggest thing I, I had started my quote unquote agency back in February and was heavily involved in one group and I'm no longer in that group per se for various reasons. But the thing is, one of the things I kept seeing a lot of, you'll get in there, someone I asked, for instance, um, should I use my keyword in my business title on GMB? And everybody gets that question. And you know, you Google product experts, first thing they say is no, you can't, it's a violation of terms of service. They just spit that out. And I tell them, said, actually, it's not a violation of terms of service, as long as that's the DBA or LLC of your business name. And they said, oh, that's, that has nothing to do with it yet it has everything to do with it because it's your fact is if your business name and it's how you represent yourself in the real world, you can use it. If I want to call myself John Wayne, the plumber in Arizona, I can call myself John Wayne, the plumber in Arizona, but I shouldn't go to your business site. And then it says, you know, Terry Samuels plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, and the, uh, same thing. We, we typically, um, could I, you know, I, I claim a lot of listings. Um, I think I have five level 10 guides that I use to 
do stuff for the positive. I don't do stuff for the negative. But, um, you know, I mean, I've just last week, I found an SEO freaking um, unverified listings, no reviews, no pictures, don't even know why the frick it was ranking. And I claimed it. And it's, yep. um, you know, and I changed the business name because I put, I put, so I put my brand in everything, you know, so Salteris got sell SEO. I mean, so that's, we've always put the brand in um, just because I think it makes, makes it look cleaner. And, and the brand is a brand, you know, people yep. don't build brands in this business, which is crazy. You have to build your brand. Um, you know, forget all the rankings and all that stuff. It's please. interesting that you say that because that's one of the things I usually tell people. SEO is essentially branding. Yep. It's you all know, if, you, if you look at Nike, if I say sports shoes, most people think of Nike, Adidas without even thinking about it. And if I say a certain keyword, you should automatically go to that person in your mind. Hey, yeah, I need this painter or whatever. And I've heard John is the great person in Phoenix and he's done, you know, he did that commercial building over here and stuff because it's a brand that he's creating. It's not quote unquote some dark secret, you know. And that's the whole thing about billboards. You know, a lot of people that we deal with, especially in the legal space, spend a fortune on billboards um, or, you know, bus stop signage, stuff like that. Well, you know, if you don't have the longevity, because that's building brand. That's not, nobody's going to remember your freaking website. Nobody's going to remember your stupid phone number. Yeah. They're going to remember your brand. So if you only do a billboard once a month, every other month, nobody's going to remember crap. But if you do the billboard for a year in the same place, people yeah. are going to understand that brand. And it's the same way with anything digital. You know, your brand is, is who you are. And so everything I do is Saltera. It doesn't matter. You know, and I've got a second agency with Justin Blake, Infinity Ranking. And that agency is built for white label. It's built to sell SEO services that we have tested, that, you know, we know work. But it's not something that we go out and, you know, mon I mean, it's not something that we go out and is market. You know, Saltera is the brand. So, um, you know, and that's the biggest thing that I always tell people, you know, especially roofing companies, you know, Everybody's got to have an exit. So if you're not working on your exit, correct, then you're killing yourself. And one of the things that I despise, and I've done this many, many times, I get people that come to me and say, "Hey, I'm spending twenty thousand dollars a month in pay per click, and I want to, I want to. What else you think I need to do?" And I was like, "Well, first of all, you need to get some organic traffic because if you ever sell your business with no organic traffic and it's just paid traffic, your business is worth less money." Worthless, you know, compared to your website that's bringing in 5,000 people a month organically, and you can shut AdWords off and it'll still bring in leads. Now you have a valued asset for your business. So if you're not thinking about the exit from the very beginning, and maybe this is because I'm 57 years old and I'm always thinking the exit, you have to start from the very beginning. So you have to say, okay, this is my brand. You know, I'd like to, you know, set your goals. I'd like to sell and, you know, have somebody buy me out, you know, have. Yeah, you know, we were, I was actually talking to my wife about this today because, you know, I listen, Tony Robbins talks about the same thing, having an exit strategy and yeah. stuff. And if you haven't, if you don't have an exit strategy, you don't have a business, you have a job. Exactly. Um, I told yeah. us if, for instance, you could build up an agency, get a lot of clients, and therefore now people trust you and your brand. I said, and then you could turn around and sell that off to someone else that wants it, you know, yeah. and you can make a very good look, you know, make a very good income for retirement or whatever you want to do or reinvest and start another business. Yep. One of our biggest roofing companies um, just sold out for 17 million. Um, he was a million dollar roofer when he took us on about four years ago. And, mm -hmm. um, and we went out and built him assets, you know, so when he went to the bargaining table to sell his business, he had 13 websites. He was bringing in close to about eight, thousand traffic a month organically never did do words um and you know and so the deal went pretty smoothly to get him out and nice thing about it is they didn't take seven of the websites that i built for them so i took those back and now they're lead gen sites so <laughs> just, you know, so hey it's your loss but um yeah. you know but the whole thing is is that you know i always have this conversation with my clients you know what is your exit and that question alone to business owners it's amazing. I used to ask for business plans. I get the same response now when I ask for, you know, what's your exit plan? They don't have one. Don't, have, know, a, don't have a business plan. Don't have an exit plan. Yeah, don't have it. You know, and then I, I used to 
mainly ask for a business plan at the beginning of an SEO contract so I can hopefully kind of see what your goals are because you're not going to know. You, somebody else probably did your business plan for you. You probably never even read it. But the idea is, is that, you know, if you don't have an exit and a way to get there and hopefully a time frame, then, you know, one of the reasons why I don't just want to be an SEO agency, you know, because SEO, is, out of all the things that we do, SEO is the one thing that can go negative by Google real quick. So they're not going to get they let, they let out an update. And next thing you know, you're tanked. Exactly. So they're not going to get rid of pay-per-click. They're not going to get rid of GMPs. But I think they're going to make traffic to the website from search engines much more difficult for us. Yeah. Uh, it's not saying it's you can't get traffic. That's not the point. But the idea is, is that that's the one variable in our business that we don't have control of. And we see that every friggin' update. So um, that's why I'm like, okay, where do we want to focus at? We're always going to be a web design house. You know, when COVID hit about four or five months into COVID, I took all of my packages and I made a la carte. So you can a la carte anything for me right now. Doesn't matter if you want just on page, just schema, just GMB, just whatever. We can have a conversation about that instead of saying, give me 1500 bucks and I'll do all this stuff. Yeah, well, I've been having that a lot lately too. People just wanting one offs and I have never done one, just one offs. It's just be there all of it or none of it. Yeah. Um, you know, but now I'm getting my, you know, I've gotten systems in place where I'm considering doing like the first thing I did start really doing one offs of was schema. Yeah. Schema and it was a great one off. Because and I didn't, I didn't really think that many people would want it. And then, you know, <laughs> When I started offering, it's like, yeah, I'll take it or I heard about it or whatever. So we started doing that. But then again, I have people, well, can you do location pages only the way you stack them? Can you do a press release? I'm like, well, maybe I have to reconsider what I'm doing and put all these on my site in regards to one offer services. For the people that don't want to ha don't either a don't have the money or don't want to do all of the quote unquote the entire SEO package per se. So. Yeah, and that's the whole thing, especially when you have something that's out of everybody's control, like, like COVID. You know, my only thing is, is now once we come out of COVID, which we don't know what that's going to be, am I still going to do a la carte or am I going to go back to, you know, if this is your well, choice, yeah. back to this. So, you know, but I do like the only thing I don't like doing one offs and I'm starting to get some requests for it is link building. Yeah, I've been and getting I, those lately, too, and I, I won't touch them. I, I don't want to go back to selling links again. Um, mm -hmm. We have a huge network. We have great links, but I don't want to be the link guy. I don't want to be the link seller because I. One of the biggest things about PBNs is they're not private because you put them all over freaking Facebook. So, yeah. yeah, the first freaking word in a PBN is private. So yeah. when you go out and start selling links, and now I don't hide my links. I show people the links. You know, I've always I won't even buy links from somebody that hides them from me. You know, so. Yeah. I want to see what I buy and I do believe in disavow. If your link's crap, I'm going to disavow the freaking thing if you don't. Yeah. Remember it. So, um, you know, but the, but the a la carte system I think is a good tool now when people are trying to figure out, okay, I might be able to open next month. I need to start doing some stuff to get back to it. You know, I haven't, <clears throat> we lost a bunch of medical spas and I got, we got one back a couple weeks ago and she's freaking out because she's lost all her rankings. And I sit there and said, well, you didn't do anything for a year. Matter of fact, you put a maintenance screen up saying you were closed. So, yeah. you know, Google is not going to give you anything. First of all, Google doesn't rank stagnant websites. And second of all, you know, Google's not going to send people to your website if you're closed. You know, I said, you should have just put a pop up saying, hey, we're currently closed please buy a gift certificate or do something else, but don't just shut the freaking website down. Yeah. You know? And so she's, she's like, well, how long is it going to take to get back? I said, it could be months. I said, we don't know. I yeah. had a guy recently from Australia. He was involved in uh, CBD basically, or CBD or testosterone, one of the two um, for men. And he basically had this kind of like the same situation and um, then wanted us to start doing stuff. And I, thought he, he thought I could turn him around in a month. And I said, no, absolutely not. Because it's, you know, if you look at your competition versus you, you have, let's say 500 backlinks. This guy's got 50,000 and a lot of them are really, really high DA, very good links. And he just came back into the market and now he's dominating the market. I ain't going to build pull a miracle, 
you know, out for you whenever you don't want to do a, you don't want to do what I'm saying to do. And B, you're just wanting me to quote unquote, fix it yeah. one time, fix and fix it real quick. And that's just not going to happen. So, <laughs> so with that, any other questions I got, I answered one on Facebook about what page builder I use directory creator. Um, and I've tested a number of them. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to check out that deck or directory builder because we're doing everything manual. And I'm always looking for something to make my life a little bit easier. So, yeah, it's, getting, sure. it's getting late here. It's 11.30 p.m. So I'm going to get yeah. off of this. And But it's been great talking to you. And I hope to talk to you some more. And, Heck yeah. Uh, Let me know. I love, I love doing this type of stuff. And, um, you know, I think what you were doing is great. Um, you know, and that's the... That's the kind of thing that makes a difference in this business, you know, so it's um, people like you and people like, you know, me and Chaz and Clint and some other people out there that have a passion for helping people do this stuff the right way. Yep. Um, those are the people that you need to pay attention to. And and again, yeah, I can't say it enough. Don't just take something from Facebook and go implement it on a website. So yeah, that's what I say all the time is like people listen to just anybody that says they're an SEO expert and stuff. And I always tell people, I mean, yes, the quote unquote, I have 20 years. Craig's got over 20 years. You got easily over 20 years. And I tell them, say, the thing is um, I test things and I'll tell you what works, what doesn't work. And I just don't just listen to just anybody. I want to see like if you're hiring an SEO expert, um, I want people that a, I can look at their rankings. B I can call them and say, you know, how is this person with your rankings? I want some referrals, not just, Hey, I did this awesome website and it's ranking. Well, what proof do I have? I don't have nothing yeah. except the word. And you know, that's not, you know, it's yeah, not it's, good it's enough for me. So. More importantly, how are you ranking, but how long have you been ranking? Yep. One of the right. tricks in this business is the black hat trick that you can get somebody ranking pretty friggin' quick. Yep. It's, there's no longevity. It's the longevity. And that's what I was telling someone before, even with like click, <coughs> click through rate manipulation. It's like, it can't just do it once and it's just going to stay there. Yep. Usually you have to, I'm not, you know, usually what will happen, you can do it and then you'll stay there for a while and then drop. Yeah. And then you have to go back and do it again. Uh, it's not going to be a one-time thing. I mean, SEO in general is that way, but you're not going to do a one time and it's done. You know, and then, you know, so, but yeah. 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 And I have a lot of clients that have been with us long enough. They're doing so well. They're on what we call the maintenance plan. Um, so basically we're just, you know, keeping track of their link profile. You know, we're not really positively building anything because we don't need to, but we're just watching what happens. Um, and if somebody gets a link attack, I've got one under a, under a DOS attack right now. And I call them mm -hmm. and they say, look, I need, I need a thousand bucks to attack this. And so, you know, no problem, Terry send me an invoice so yep. but i've taken him down to 650 a month in maintenance so he's saving a freaking fortune and you know so those type of things i tell people you don't have to always pay me the same amount of money we're every we kind of we kind of do the same thing once we get them to a certain level there's a maintenance plan so exactly so but, yeah. all right no problem um it was i appreciate it buddy um enjoy life over there in the philippines why we live in sure. this freaking country here <laughs> You know, but um, yeah, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Um, any questions I need or just message me, whatever. I'm, I'm an open book. So I'm not going to give you the, I'm not gonna give you my templates. I've had two people. <laughs> like, hey, I, I'm the same way. Library? No, you're not going to get my schema library. So. I, I understand the same way. I'm just, you know, but I do my SOPs that I give to my students and stuff. I just tell them, if you think you could do it, have at it. Mm -hmm. 60 pages of schema. So go for it. Exactly. Yep. Good luck. Anyway, so, but I appreciate it. I'll talk to you again soon, Terry. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful night. Good sleep. You too. Thank you, bud. Okay. All right. Bye.